I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about polar coordinates. In problem number 49, what I have is I have the polar curve r equals 1 minus 2 sine of 3 theta. And what I've done is I've graphed that curve in two different ways. I've graphed it as if it were a Cartesian curve with theta being the x value and r being the y value. And then I've also graphed it as a polar curve. Okay, over here on the Cartesian coordinate systems for r equals 1 minus 2 sine of 3 theta, I've labeled some things. I've got a point A, a point B, a point C, D, E, F, all the way through M. And what I'd like to do is I'd say, I'd like to say, okay, here are some polar coordinates that lie on this polar curve. So where is the point A over on this polar curve? Remember, these are graphed as, if this thing was graphed as a Cartesian curve, this is it graphed as a polar curve. So where are these various points over on this polar curve? Okay, let's figure it out. Let's start out looking at the very first point, point A. Now point A, what's going on here? Well, what is theta? Theta is zero. So that means that I'm pointing in the theta equals zero direction. And how far out do I go on the curve? I go out one, so r is one. So if I'm at a theta of zero and r is one, then I'm sitting right here on the curve. So I'm gonna label that guy, that's my A value. All right, now let's keep moving along this curve and I get to point B. At point B, what is theta? Well, it's not pi, it's a lot less than pi, uh, but what is R? R is zero, so it doesn't really matter what my theta is, it's a little bigger than zero, but the r value is zero, so I'm in that center point, okay? And what I'm gonna do is, since it's very hard to label that center point, I'm just gonna make an arrow in there and say that that's the point B, okay? So my origin point, or my center point, that is B. All right, let's move on to C. At C, theta is getting even bigger, so maybe we're getting close to like pi over six or something. And then what's happening to r? r is minus one. This is minus one, one, two, three. So r is negative. What does that mean? So that means when I'm facing uh, a angle of about pi over six or something, I go backward. So instead of walking forward on that, angle, I walk back one unit, and I'm sitting right here. So this is the point C on this curve. All right, let's move on. So we go up to point D. At D, theta is getting even bigger, but again, R is zero. And any time R is zero, I'm setting back at this origin point. So what's going on so far? So far I've traced out this little piece and then it's come along and come back to here. Now we're tracing out this piece and I'm back at the origin again. So this is the point B, but it's also the point D. Now let's move on. After D, I get all the way up here to E. Well E, now we're getting close to being at like we're probably at pi over two. So I would label this like pi over two approximately. In fact, it's exactly, but uh, so at pi over two, my r is three. So if I'm straight up at pi over two, I walk out one, two, three, and I'm here. So that is my point E. Now let's move on. I, my theta gets bigger, but I go back to f being where r is zero. 
So my angle is a little bigger than pi over two, but my radius is zero. So I'm back at that center point again. So what I've done is so far I've traced out around here, around here, and then I go all the way up here. I come all the way back to zero, and that's my point F. So the middle also represents point F. I think we're seeing a little bit of a pattern here, but let's keep going. Then I keep moving and I go to point G where theta's uh, a little bigger still, a uh, little bigger than pi over two. We might be getting close to pi over three and uh, R is minus one. So, oh, I'm sorry. I said uh, we are getting close to pi over three. What I meant is we're getting close to two pi over three. So uh, at two, uh, around two pi over three or out here, I'm at negative one. So here's about two pi over three. I'm at negative one and I'm back here. Okay, so that is my point uh, G. All right, then I go to H. H again, R is zero. So it's the center point. So this is H. Go to I and I'm back at three again but now I'm just slightly bigger than pi. So at an angle slightly bigger than pi, I go out one, two, three, and I get my point I. Then I head back in and R is zero again at J. So the center point again is J. Then I am going my angle's getting even bigger and I walk backward one. This is about, notice that this point is about, what, three pi over two? Three pi over two is sitting right in here and it says at three pi over two, walk back one. So at three pi over two, facing down, I walk back one and I get to point K. Then L is back at the origin again, so this is also L. And then finally, moving even further, I go up three. So we're almost at two pi. Uh, so at an angle of almost two pi, I walk out one, two, three. And that's my point M. So let's see if we can get a feel for, as this Cartesian function traces, what polar curve is getting drawn? And it looks like this. We go here, here, all the way up here, back to the origin, over here, back here, around, up here, down, around, and back to A again at two pi. And that traces out my polar curve.